and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube watching this video later on for some Grixis mid-range. This was y'all's uh, most popular deck, y'all on YouTube that were voting for the, the different decks to see today. Uh, this is the one that, that y'all wanted to, to see, so let's get at it. Let's go ahead and play some Grixis mid-range here. That's right, we got Throne of Eldraine. You can see all these awesome new Throne of Eldraine cards, especially these three drops. We got four Murderous Rider, three Bone Crusher Giant. So we got creatures that are also removal spells. You know, we get to um, cast some Swift End, but then, you know, which is similar to Bedevil. So instead of just playing Bedevil in the deck, we get to, you know, have Bedevil, but we lose two life. But then we can also play a 2-3 lifelink creature afterwards. Kind of the same thing, Bone Crusher Giant. Pretty good against aggro if we need to stomp. We need to get rid of a Teferi, we can stomp and stuff like that. But then we can also play the Giant, get a get a 4-3 out there as well. So good versatile spells. Um, one thing I've, I've wanted to play is I want to play Royal Scions. This, this card just looks awesome. But I And I w really wanted to play it with Dreadhorde Butcher and Knight of the Ebon Legion. Both of these cards giving them uh, that second plus one. Target creature gets plus two, plus zero, gain first strike and trample. That's something that I wanted to do with both of these cards. You know, it allows Dreadhorde Butcher to get through easier. And the more damage the Dreadhorde Butcher does to the opponent, the more counters it gets, the harder it is to kill. Um, and the more uh, the more da damage it does when it does get killed. And Knight of the Ebon Legion, if you pump Knight of the Ebon Legion, like let's say it's just the one, two, you pump it to be a four, five, but you also give it the plus two, plus zero, and first strike and trample. When you have a creature, you know, it has death touch whenever you pump it. So that means it has death touch, first strike, and trample. So it just only has to do one damage to a creature and then the rest trample over. And that's and that's first strike damage too. So it's basically just completely unblockable. Anything anything that blocks it only takes one damage and then the rest goes, goes to them. Um, we got some rankles also in here get some uh pressure on our opponents as well so yeah we're we're trying to get some good pressure with these things got some good removal good interaction tyrant scorn is like pretty cool honestly maybe you know i have a bit deck in here that can also like destroy a field of the dead and be some removal and removal for indestructible creatures but maybe i need to get more tyrant scorn because the thing i like about this like not only does it destroy the creature cmc3 or less but return target creature back to its owner's hand we can bounce murderous rider or bounce bone crusher giant back to our hand also and so we can we can have tyrant scorn uh turn on swift end again uh for example if we need that so that's that sounds pretty cool so let's try that i'm going to try one drown in the lock we'll see how good it is if, if we do anything with it we're going to try one i uh, got another in the board um as well um yeah enter the god eternal is just a decent removal spell help get us some life because we do have a you know some life life loss stuff we don't really have life gain so enter the god eternals helps there and then obviously a dragon god our man is kind of rough but you know that's that's life as a, a grixis player so let's let's give this a try so we're gonna go ahead and play some matches over in ranked today with grixis midrange here yeah time to go too excited. Let's play some games. Enough talking. Thoughts on a white knight deck? Um, I think with a knight deck, you probably want to be black white. I think instead of just uh, just white, I think there's a lot of good black knights, including Knight of the Ebon Legion, that we have in this deck here. Um, you can go Mardu as well, but definitely would rather play black white at least, instead of just white. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so sometimes, like, you know, we just have all removal. But that's that's the great part about the Royal Scions, is, like, if we have the wrong part of our deck, we can use the plus one ability to help get us to the correct part of our deck. We're leading with Bloodfell Caves here, in case we want to cast these things on turn two. If we don't, you know, we'll play Temple so we can shock Scions. All right, Bloodfell Caves. We got our Fox.
We already got a Royal Scions. Hello. Um. That thing's kind of big. We'll stomp that thing. So obviously I, I could kill their, their Rotting Regisaur and then attack for one. But instead of doing one damage, I'd rather them discard a card than deal one damage. I'm gonna get that discard a card if trigger on the stack there. Let's get the giant back. Where's our lands? We kept three lands and I scried a spell to the bottom. We can't find our lands. Because like if we had like a if we just drew a black source, get to play Rankle, make them sacrifice the questing beast, like that would be awesome. Just don't have any lands. Just gonna let this happen. Sweet. I'll take that trade. Need more black mana. My deck has a lot of black mana. In general. Alright, that's game. I don't know why they played Great Henge first, just to show me the Great Henge. We have 18 black sources.
I do like how Into the God Eternals matches up against Questing Beast. I'm bringing in the Drown in the Lock as another way to deal with uh, the 7 6. Which I guess we have a decent amount. Like, you know, we have all these Murderous Riders and stuff. Like, the Wrinkles are pretty good there, too. I'm kind of bid deck, but deck doesn't really kill st stuff that we want to kill. Let's get rid of that thing. And then, like, Legion's End is, you know, all that we saw for Legion's End is, like, Knight of the Ebon Legion, basically. Um. I'm not playing, why not play the rare Evolving Wilds? Because then I'd have to play an island and a mountain, and I don't want to play those cards. I don't want mountain with all these blue-black spells, and I don't really want an island with, like, Dreadhorde Butcher and stuff. I'd rather just have the tap lands. Yeah, Grasp is, I mean, obviously Grasp is really good against Questing Beast, but that's kind of it. Like, you know, there are other creatures that we saw were black. I could have other things like Nissa and stuff like that. I'm going to just trim one Dreadhorde Butcher. I could see taking out, like, the Legion's End also. Like, uh, so I was kind of debating between was Legion's End and, and Dreadhorde Butcher for, like, the last cut there. I'm going to take out one Butcher. All right, looking for more land. I don't know why my opponent is giving me information before I scry. That, that doesn't make any sense to me. It's a good card. Probably just keep it. I really want land, though. Yeah, Noxious Grass was going to be obnoxious to deal with, also. It's a really good hand. It's a really good hand. I, I don't think Fabled Passage is uh, super important. So, like, the, the very first card to, to craft. I I don't know if I have it. I have, like, just a couple of copies in, in decks, but, like, not very many at all. I don't, I don't think it's vital or anything. Getting rid of Questing Beast. Uh, I guess I could have Murderous Rider. I forgot. I you know I just forgot about Grey Hand. I sh guess I should have Murderous Rider that earlier. Yeah, now that thing being a five-five. It's annoying. All right, well, I messed that up. I guess I needed to do that upkeep. I needed to kill that. Again, just like I did last time. I, I did that last time. But I messed that up there. Ugh. Just got rid of three lands and a Great Henge. Really? <laughs> I want them to draw three lands and then a Great Henge. Oh, that's a killer. Well, I, I messed this game up.
Yeah, Great Henge is awesome. It's it's incredible. I I messed this game up by not killing their 7-6 before they could play it, obviously. Lesson learned. You know, day one, you're going to make make a mistake day one. I mean, that, that just happens, but, you know, learn, learn lessons and stuff. Yeah, but Devil destroying an artifact where Murderous Rider does not... The devil would be nice there. But yeah, I just... I mean, it looked like we got destroyed there, but honestly making that one little decision def different and that whole game could have been a lot different. But oh well. I'm going to lead with Dismal Backwater here. I think if we lead with Swamp Knight of the Ebon Legion, our life is kind of tough. Like, if, are we going to try to, like, shock to have Tyrant Scorn on two? Um, and then, you know, like, what are, like, our... You know, after that, or, you know, are we going to just continue to shock? And, and when are we getting this tap land in? And it's it's kind of rough. that thing I kind of regret keeping that dread horde butcher on top honestly yeah this is my first time playing against knights Spoke. Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. I really appreciate that, Spoke. You are awesome. Thank you. I just have nothing to play on turn four. Gotta be removal, right? Like Murderous Rider? Oh no, they can't cast Murderous Rider. Black Lance Paragon. Alright, cool. Yeah, they're missing the B for the Swift Lance. Or so the Swift End. Yep, we open the packs. Oh, I guess I could I could change the stream title now. <laughs> you have no weakness that I cannot explore. I'll just put in all the deck lists that we're playing. But yeah, the, the pack opening is up on YouTube if you want to check that out. Ember Cleave. Okay. Yeah, Wrinkle looks pretty good right now. Definitely. Yeah. I'm in there. We'll Wrinkle. They have one card left in hand. Let's discard. And then sack a creature. 
And I think I just sack Rankle over sacking Knight of the Ebon Legion. That acclaimed contender. And I will inspire. You will not block our noble path. So yeah, Knight's just gonna be lethal next turn. Like it doesn't really matter what they play. Knight's gonna be lethal. Like as long I mean they could play a removal spell for it, obviously, but if they just play blockers, they're not gonna survive. All right, we are up a game. Let's get these legions ends, which is vengeance. Um, yeah, I guess we have Massacre Girl. I didn't really say it. Massacre Girl is m one of my least favorite cards in the sideboard because we don't really have good ways to get, you know, to have the Massacre Girl actually kill a lot of things. Like, as we saw, like, that game, like, think if we had a Massacre Girl there towards, you know, like, Massacre Girl is not actually killing some of their creatures. I think this could probably be a better, there could be a better use of the sideboard slot than Massacre Girl, but we'll try it out. We'll try it out. Um, yeah, yeah, Royal Scions gives trample. So yeah, giving giving death touch like a big death touch trampler, like you just you just can't block that. It's just unblockable. <laughs> it's unblockable. So Dreadhorde Butcher is probably one of my weaker cards here, or maybe maybe it's actually Rankle. I mean, if they're playing like multiple creatures, making them sacrifice one isn't super valuable. I mean, I guess we'll cut like two dragon gods because we don't have all five. So we'll cut like two dragon gods, a rank, rankle, and one royal scions, one butcher. Let's try that. Because, you know, if we're behind royal scions, you know, royal scions is really the best whenever you're ahead. Our team or deck later on, yeah, that, that plays Questing Beast and Royal Scions together. Yeah, we got Oko, Royal Scions, Questing Beast. A bunch of stuff there. Yeah, I have I have one Witch's Vengeance in here already. Um so yeah, we got we got one of those. But um But you know, depending on what what happens with the metagame, we could definitely play a second one instead of the Masker Girl. Try cast down. That card rotated out. No cast down in standard no more. Yeah, first strike death touch trampler is is crazy. It is really crazy. Saved it for the second creature. Felt like they were gonna want to you want me to use Legion's End on the first creatures to save for the second one. That was my guess, at least. We 
yeah, we'll just start, you know, casting murderous riders and or like swift ends and murderous riders and all that kind of stuff. Assume that's a sorcery, right? I, yeah, I only got one questing beast for my 175 packs, and it was only it was like towards the end of the packs. I only got one questing beast. Our deck looks pretty good against that that creature deck. Whoa! Another throne of Eldraine booster. All right, another mythic. Mythic, mythic. Nah. Linden. Well, that's not a mythic. You got three and 60 packs, and two were back to back. Nice. And you got two Okos. Awesome. Good pack opening there. Um, how's our hand looking? Pretty good. You'll be making a blue-black mill list at some point over the next week. Probably not. It's not really on a, the, sh the short list of things to make. I don't know exactly where to go with it, honestly. Um... Yeah. I don't know. That one would take more time to try to figure out. I think it's more important. I don't think turn one night is very important. When you have turn one night, then you don't do anything turn two. I want Thought Erasure and Dread Horde Butcher for turn two and turn three. Depending on what land or, you know, like what my opponent does here will affect which one of those that we're doing. No, I don't have any Yurok Foods deck. All right, well, we definitely don't need Red Horde Butcher. So it's between... I'm not taking Questing Beast. Once upon a time, I'm just going to grab a land. I could just play Paradise Druid. It's basically between Nissa and Great Henge. Can we actually keep them from casting Great Henge? Like, maybe. We definitely need to draw lands. So that, that Steam Vents on top is good. We need more lands than that. Yeah, I'll, I'll build a Grixis Fires deck. Fires of Invention. I'll build that. Um... Like I said, we've only put together Teamer so far and to try. But yeah, I'll, I'll put it together with Grixis also. So yeah, Fires of Invention looks pretty fun because Drawn from Dreams is a really fun card. And Fires turning on Drawn from Dreams, making it so easy. I like that. And it makes it a lot easier to cast Nicol Bolas as well.
If my opponent ever casts the Great Henge, it's going to be really hard for us to win, to be honest. Legion's End. Come on, deck. Legion's End. Darn. So honestly, maybe I should have just taken Great Henge because of that. That card's really hard to beat. But it costs like 7 mana with 2 Paradise Druids. It's not that hard to cast. Yeah, I, I really regret not, not taking that thing, honestly, now. Those blind to tyranny are lost. They just can't see it. Gaze into my face. Put on your true shape. <laughs> it's not fair. Yes, they would have been able to play Nissa. Here we ended up drawing the rider for Nissa. Ugh. I don't even know if I'm supposed to do this. Each player discards a card. Yeah, I am. I don't think I'm supposed to draw because I I don't think I should make it easier for them to get great henge into play. Made them discard Great Henge. That's good. You know, I would love to draw a card for a land, but I really didn't want my opponent to draw a card. Though. Good old tap land. Got rid of another great henge. Goose. I 
pretty sure this is game one. Hey Valshalda, doing good? Have been I outsmarted you eons ago. Yeah, questing beast is, is ridiculous. Great henge is ridiculous. These two cards are pretty insane. I mean, they gave green a lot of good stuff. So I think they were supposed to make a food with Gilded Goose and sack the food? I don't know. I don't know if they're supposed to do that. Food. Brix is doing okay for us. Doing pretty good. So we're one and one up a game. Hmm. Maybe I'm supposed to play Ugin to kill Great Henge. Great Henge seems like the, the card that I'm really struggling with. I'm kind of thinking this, but maybe like this Bedeck could be Bedevil instead. This Bedeck hasn't been spectacular. I kind of think I'd rather have Bedevil. Um, you know, we haven't really seen Field of the Dead decks yet. Rankle's been nice. So I, I don't want six five drops and a six drop. We have to we have to trim these. Um, I guess I'm gonna trim Enter the God Eternals. It does Enter the God Eternals does match up well against Questing Beast. That's the thing, but not the Great Henge plus Questing Beast. All right, so this is 63. We're gonna trim a Royal Scions and a Dreadhorde Butcher, with us likely being a little bit behind. Maybe I just take out. Honestly, maybe maybe we just take out Dreadhorde Butchers. Let's get the Scion back in here. Like they're playing a Boreal Grazer. The Dreadhorde Butcher looks kind of bad. But then Wrinkle is worse if we don't have Butcher. We'll try this. I've really liked Murderous Rider. I could see playing like, you know, getting rid of the Bedeck and going down to three Rider and then playing two Bedevil. I don't like Ego as an answer to Henge. I don't like that. Because they're not going to have four henges, and like it doesn't it doesn't cripple their deck if they don't have the great henge. They still have plenty of cards they can play and kill us just fine without it. I think ego is really only for whenever it cripples the opponent's deck. Because you, it's not only card disadvantage playing ego; it's also um, the tempo that you lose, uh, the traction you lose by taking a turn off to play it as well. Yeah, Butcher doesn't even get through Gilded Goose. That's kind of rough.
Trying to lock doesn't even kill Paradise Druid here. Lost so much already. I won't lose more. You can still walk away. Frugor, thanks to the tier one sub there. I appreciate that. This one looks pretty lost if we don't. Find a removal spell for Questing Beast right now, or a discard spell for Great Henge. There we go, discard spell for Great Henge. All right, now we're in there still. Yeah, I guess so. That's gonna put me. That's gonna really hurt. I don't really know why I did that. Survivor. <laughs> For some reason, I was, I, you know, just thinking about everything else and we're at the <laughs> whole Vigilant Questing Beast thing. Just thinking that wasn't going to be blocking because it attacked. That was not worthwhile. Alright, so if I just don't, I just should end a Shocked to play Dreadhorde Butcher. That card's that card's rough too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we were we were dead. Let's get Wrinkle back in here. I like, I like Wrinkle. I don't like Dread Dreadhorde Butcher. Let's trade those. I know this drowning in the lock is for the the late game, but it looked pretty bad there. But it could be nice in the late game. <laughs> what if I play duresses? So our deck doesn't have ramp or card draw, so that means we can't win. Yeah, they have a lot of a lot of spells, you know, especially with having Great Henge and then the different planeswalkers we've seen. You know, maybe we nab a once upon a time. Could have Vela Summer, Mystical Dispute. A lot of spells there. I think the rope sound bug has been fixed, I think. Because I'm not I don't hear it now. Yeah, Theater of Horrors, that's a good that's a good call with fires. That's a good call there. Wow. I just want to keep five lands Oko Krasis. So I don't even know if I should Thought Erasure this turn. We're probably, you know... Do I wait till turn four to Thought Erasure? Do I just play Scions on three and then Thought Erasure on four? No, there's a good chance that I'm probably just taking, like, Krasis anyway at that point. It seems 
I don't even know what this minus eight does, to be honest. Alright, we got three black sources for Nicol Bolas. Deal four, or let's see, sorry, draw four. Then deal damage to any target equal the number of cards in your hand. Alright, that's kind of cool. Mm, a quest of mystery. I will learn what nobody yet knows. So they're one mana away from casting the Great Henge. Vivian Paradise Druid is so nice. Giving that vigilance. Wow, they don't even give a vigilance. You fight like a city brat. Okay. Maybe I should murderous rider in response to that. No, let's I wanna hold up removal for if they attack. Every defeat is a new beginning. So if I just cash in Royal Scions, we get to draw four and then do seven to them. But then my Royal Scions is gone. Or I tick it up again and, and hope. I think we do that. Hope we can protect Let it. Me synthesize the fight. No, there's not an option to buy more than one pack at a time with gold. Uh, now we lose. Ah, oh, that card's unbeatable. Practiced a new combination. You will not like it. All right, so we do have we have the drown in the lock that can counter three drops or less. Which I guess I'm going to just go ahead and tyrant scorn and destroy this. Destroy that Paradise Druid to make it four drops or less. And also we don't have to worry about the Paradise Druid attacking the Scions. So we can we can counter um, Questing Beast before it enters so they don't get to draw a card. For example there. Don't get to counter that thing. So I know I could have had them spend one more mana to give that thing haste, but I didn't want them to draw a Veil of Summer. I guess that's kind of the problem, though. They get to draw that thing. Or they get to play that thing now. Retreat is a valid strategy. Yeah, I guess that's the problem there. Hmm.
Well, yeah, yeah. So that's that's why I didn't uh, do the the whole let them spend the mana for haste. But yeah, yeah. Our not having check lands has, has hurt us quite a bit. That's for sure. I don't have plans right now to build a deck around Kenrith, but I'm sure I will eventually. The whole of the multiverse will bend to my will. My revenge will be painful. My intellect is without limit. Out grinding Great Henge is pretty rough. Every creature turns into a ton of creatures. But we got the Dragon God, getting us an extra card every turn and making them exile I will return a card. One day. Let your weak minds crumble. So we're doing okay. We're doing okay. Oh, I probably should have Murderous Rider on my turn. Or at least upkeep. Yeah, at least upkeep. Not again, not give him another chance for Veil of Summer, but good, no Veil of Summer. I went through hell to lose to you. Starting over is the only way. Yeah, Doom Foretold is really good card for sure. Um, may start seeing more enchantment removal because of it because yeah it is awesome but even even with enchantment removal you know you get like the sacrifice as long as you play it when they're on tap or when they're tapped out you get the sacrifice and then uh you know if they kill it it's not that bad for you but yeah it's really powerful Keep drawing spells. Okay, 
guess they're trying to figure out how to cast Hydroid Crisis, I think. Still a draw to I will wipe your blood. My schemes are never ending. Not bad for a mouse. Ugh. Yeah, can't block that thing. I have survived Nico Bolas, and I will survive you. Get him. We gotta draw spells. I need to get, get rid of that box. I have other schemes to attend to. We need to find Ugin. Like Ugin will resonate throughout the multiverse. Defiance has consequences. Ugin allows us to, you know, kill the Great Henge. That's our that's our Great Henge removal spell that I have in here right now. With larger predators. Is Ugin. I think it's better to, to leave this Nickel Bolas out there than just play the other one. And tick up immediately. We need Ugin. Open your heart to the magic that dances around you. Welcome to the feast. In exchange for eternal servitude. Hmm. Generous. Let's do this to kill Nissa instead of minusing. Start making three threes. We'll get to make one three three at least. My fortitude. I am in need of rest. Ugh. 
It's a good turn for us. Another crisis. It's just this is just like mythic dot deck. Just every single card's a mythic. You know, Nissa's you know basically a mythic. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to get sick of playing Oko, <laughs> playing against Oko already. Yeah, it's just another crisis. That was just a really great draw step. Draws five. And now every single creature they play draws another card. All right, so we have we have learned that I need... You know, we need, like, at least two Bedevils in here. Like, we need removal for the Great Henge. Um, so that's good. Good to learn. Let's broaden your existence. But you know, that's something that we've learned here. Simic finally have some strong decks. I mean, Simic's been good for, like, ever since ever since this card. Ever since this card in Ravnica Allegiance, Simic has been at the top of the metagame in different forms. Um, so there's nothing new with this set. But yeah, if that's what you mean, like, yeah, since, like, before that. Because, I mean, before that, they only had, like, you know, uh, they only had, like, Teamer, Marvel, and then Teamer Energy after that. I mean, Simic's basically been the best for a few years, or at least it's had very good decks for a few years now. <laughs> the goat tokens from Clackbridge Troll are really cute. I uh, can't wait to play that. All right, one and two. So we are going to go turn one knight here. I don't know if I want to shock on turn two to hold up Bone Crusher Giant or not. We'll kind of see what our opponent does. Probably will. Probably will shock on turn two, even if you know they just play a land. Um. Oh yeah, I wrote I wrote Golgari Stompy, but that's Golgari mid range or Gol that's Golgari Troll. I wrote the wrong deck over there. Green deck. Yeah, we'll go ahead and shock. Hopefully, it's not Paradise Druid. It's going to be pretty hard for my opponent to come back here unless they have removal. But, like, you know, Legion's End, obviously, will end this Legion. Strike fear into the hearts of oh, no! Ugh, I need to play my Steam Vents first, because I can't, I can't Steam Vents play Legion's End. Hmm.
All right, so I don't get to activate. So I'll just have Bone Crusher Giant up instead. All right, well, I kind of messed that up. Because, you know, I could have could have shocked in Steam Vents, activated, and then both these knights would be two threes. Yeah, Wildborn Preserver would be pretty good. It doesn't work that well with Arcbow. Because Arc Arcbow is the kind of card you want to spend all of your mana on your Arcbow uh, to you know to dig as far as you can for a for any card, and so then you don't have extra mana for Wildborn Preserver. All right, we're just gonna shock. So they gotta have a sweeper to stay alive. Which I don't I don't know exactly what we're doing with the sweeper with this mana base, but we'll see. So even if they play a sweeper to stay alive, the Royal Scion's ultimate kills them with the minus eight there. So like we have we have lethal in two different spots here. GG. <laughs> yeah, they played Star of Extinction. They play that new Iron Crag card, whatever it is, that adds seven red to the mana pool and then Star of Extinction. You know, for four mana. That's a cool combo. I wish we had those together in standard. Doom foretolds your rock, Kenrith. Hmm. All right, so they're just trying to play some really big stuff. So they're you know trying to feel field of the dead and everything. Um, I could play this witch's vengeance for field of the dead, but I don't know. Maybe it's better just to play legion's ends. Um, so like. Basically, Murderous Rider, Bone Crusher Giant, Thought Tyrant Scorn. We'll get rid of Tyrant Scorn. I do like, I do kind of like bouncing the Scorn. I, I'm not sure about these Bone Crusher Giants, honestly. Maybe Drown in the Lock can counter stuff. I don't know if Drown in the Lock can actually counter anything. We have to play like Cavalier Thorns first. I don't know. We'll just play one Drown in the Lock. We'll just see what happens here. I have not faced any blue-red Phoenix deck. I've been facing a lot of Questing Beast Great Henge so far. So those are those are both of my losses here with the Grixis deck. But haven't seen anybody play uh, Phoenix yet.
Yeah, Gruul has a lot of good cards. Oh, that's awesome, Atherin. You went 13 and 3 with the Abzian hero list that we're gonna play later. That's awesome. Anything anything about the list that you that you really liked or really didn't like? Is it good to spend coins to buy packs from Eldraine? Yes. If you need the new cards. Um, if there's other cards and old sets that you need too, you can, you know, buying packs with the old sets, nothing wrong with that either. Um, but yeah, it's a, a good use of coins. Um, if you like, if you like drafting though, I, you know, recommend, you know, you can save your coins for draft also. I think that for the previous sets, they haven't had the draft available until like two weeks after the set releases, though. Uh, the castles have a varying degree of impact, depending on which castle. Um, I think the green one is the, the worst one, but a lot of them are just kind of free if you're playing one and two color decks, though. So Legion's End is in here for the zombies. Cool. So Duress is a dead card now. I'm gonna keep the land, make sure we can curve Rankle into Nicol Bolas. We just had a sub, Sinus Alpha, welcome to the channel. Definitely getting the hype in there for you. Thank you so much. That is our ninth beautiful sub of the day. Wrinkle looks awesome here. We can just do each player discards a card. We both discard. I'll just discard these duresses. I can't cast duress because my opponent has hexproof. Anyway, so now our duresses actually do stuff. Rankle has been has been pretty impressive so far. So so far today, you know, it says so I have three and two and two and two, but there was also like the one match where my opponent like didn't get to play. I didn't count that over here, but it counted it ranked it ranked me up though. So it counted as a win. So we're four, so technically we're four and two plus two and two, so we're six and four today according to this and we've gone down from like we started at like ranked 500 something and now we're at 700 something and we've gone six and four <laughs> winning 160 percent that's rough all right we got a couple of packs uh these packs though I, I have like the cards in these sets so we could maybe open up a wild card Okay, struggling against the super low to the aggro deck. So what? So I have a I have a mastery orb already. Awesome. Let's check out our mastery tree. I haven't checked out this mastery tree yet. Ooh, this looks kind of cool. It's not a tree though. Do they still call it a tree? Yeah, they call it a tree. This is not a tree. Maybe they should call it like mastery path or something. <laughs> All right, so we can, if we go white, we have Shining Armor, Sir Allen, Glass Casket, Linden, Worthy Knight, and Realm Cloaked Giant. All right, so that one's pretty weak. Witching Well, that thing. Frogify, Gadwick, Fay of Wishes, the Royal Scions. Uh, I was going to say that one's pretty weak too, but then there's Royal Scions back there. 
Giant Skewer, Sir Conrad. Oh, I want that. I want that. And I want that. Ugh, the black one's good. We got three really good cards. All right, maybe we'll have to do that. But I'm assuming the green one's going to be really good, too. What do we got for red? I'll have the slipper. Tor, Braun, Fervent Champion, and then Ember Cleave. Yeah. That card's good. Yorvo's good. And then Great Henge. Uh, three good ones in green also. All right, well, green and black both look pretty good. I'm going to start with black. I'm going to start with black. <laughs> yep, yep, no mono red, no mono blue. Well, yeah, mono blue is just dead. All right, see you, boot. <clears throat> All right, let's play one more match with Grixis here. Hopefully turn this into a three and two, and then we'll move on to our next deck. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah, Paper Magic has been around since 93 has been around for 26 years. This platform arena is only, you know, it's been like an open beta for just one year now. Yeah, mon yeah, there there can still be a mono blue deck. I, I guess I didn't mean, but like that that version of mono blue like it was before is dead. But there can be different mono blue decks. Which of the mono color decks looks the cheapest to build? Probably red still. Like it's gonna be good and cheap. Probably like mono red cavalcade. We're basically a five card hand anyway, with two five drops. All right, so we're going to keep this, and we're going to get rid of the Knight of the Ebon Legion. You know, we're basically a Grixis control hand here. I could get rid of Dragon God, but Dragon God's just so good. Um, Yeah, Once, up, Once Upon a Time is a really good card. Yeah, it's, it's really good. I... I don't think it's, like, one of the best green cards in the set. Like, I think Questing Beast is a better card, and Great Henge is right up there, too. Mm. They have a lot of creatures they get to sacrifice. I'm hoping they don't hit the land... Requesting Beast here. Okay, good. Another troll. Graveyard. Why is this not working? There we go. The reason why we got to put that in the graveyard because it's not a third black source for Dragon God. Mono Black Value played played really well. That was a fun deck to play. I liked it. I'm certain you're quite charmed to meet me. One night, and all your cares are gone. Oko does a really good job against Dragon God just making food that they get to sacrifice or exile to the Dragon God trigger. Oh dear. Hmm. 
So if I kill Oko, then they draw a land, they get to play Nyssa, and I'm in trouble. Kill the Druid. Yeah, that's that's what I think. I think we should probably replace one Rider and the Bedeck with playing two Bedevils. It's not poor. Well, that's annoying. This Oko card is good. They're all three threes. My thing's a two three. It's really annoying. Again. Your existence is pointless. Yeah, I have a Fires of Invention teamer deck. I don't have it on the list here for today. We made 13 decks total, so I don't, I don't have time for everything. We'll play it tomorrow. Stop drawing cards you can cast. Ugh. I guess we got a chump block, I guess. Again. So obviously if they draw a land I die. I suffer for your cause. Yeah, I think there's I think there's good reanimate stuff in Grixis. Yeah, I think Royal Scions is a really good add to Grixis reanimate. I cannot exploit. Yeah, this food over here has been a little brutal. Ooh, their top deck land was Temple. We gotta find something. I'll keep us alive. Barely. 
There we go. That's something. I have other schemes to I outsmarted you eons ago. I can take Nissa. <laughs> Never mind. There's two Nissas. Guess we don't get to take Nissa. So when their other card was like the Great Hinge or something like that. So the reason why they didn't destroy the troll in response the last turn was because if they drew land and played Nissa, they would have a three power attacker and I'd be dead. So I had to hold up I had to hold up the Tyrant Scorn for the for the Nissa. I wish Butch Butcher could kill Gilded Goose. So I'm hoping we draw something to deal with the forest. I, I may have Nickel Bolas just take out Nissa. Oh, geez. Okay. Okay. That was a pretty perfect card right there. So now do I even take out Nyssa or do I wait a turn? Yeah, let's, let's do this land thing. Okay, okay. All right. Good job, enter the God Eternals. Thanks, Ninja. Yeah, that was a perfect draw to end that game. All right, get all the Legion's Ends and all the Noxious Graphs. You know, like, they're playing all the two drops and everything. We're going more control here. Um... I don't like seven five drops though. Does Massacre Girl just not kill things anymore? Maybe maybe Massacre Girl doesn't. Because, like, the goose is even an O2 now, so, like, it's hard. It's really hard to get Masked Girl started. Yeah, we probably need Ugin for the Great Henge. Oh, I just put that card in. Yeah, I could play Angrass Rampage instead of Bedevil. I'm thinking Bedevil, though. But maybe Rampage is the way to go. Yeah, that's a completely yeah, it's a different deck ultra. I I know Fires of Invention is is good in Grixis. Yes, I'm very well aware of that, but yeah, it's a it's a different deck. This is not a Fires of Invention deck.
that you want to be you want to play clunky grixis control because fires of invention makes your clunky deck not clunky it it like rewards you for playing clunky cards in it please no oko okay no oko Immediately have Oko. To the magic that dances around you. Uh. One bite, and all your cares are gone. That really hurts. That turns on Gilded Goose, of course. For that mana. That was that was a really killer top deck. I mean, I guess it didn't have to be a top deck. I guess they could have wanted to have Veil of Summer up. <laughs> Fairness? What a bizarre expectation. Oko is so busted. It's not poison. Trust me. my face and put on your true shape. So we we lost to every Oko deck we played against. Won the other two matches. Oh, that was just game two. Never mind. So not having Ritual of Soot looks like it's really hurting. Looks like instead of Witch's Vengeance, I should have Ritual of Soot. Veil of Summer is pretty rough. One mana, Cryptic Command. It's just, it's really hard to beat these green decks with Grixis. <laughs> it's like... It's really hard to have the cards line up. It's really tough. No, I don't think Oko will be banned. Ever. I don't. I mean, can it? Yes. Will it? No. Noxious Grasp was probably going to be a main deck card. I have the three in the sideboard. I had 
I was going to play one in the main and then three in the board, but decided to take out one for an extra Tyrant Scorn that can, like, rebounce my adventure creatures. But it'll likely be a main deck card for this format. Just like it was last format. You can't play on Ego in these kind of matchups. You just can't. You'll, you'll lose if you play on Ego. You can't... I can't possibly take a turn off to play a spell that doesn't um, that doesn't trade with another spell. I can't I can't like play like lose all the traction of of tapping three mana and spending that that turn to just play a spell that is um, just an O for one. You know, like, it doesn't trade with anything. You just, like, sure, you can name Oko and take Oko out of their deck. That doesn't... That doesn't help you. Because while you're doing that, your opponent is just playing other spells that are going to... They're going to... That are going to kill you. You just, like, took the time off to do that. And then their, their beatdown creatures are just going to kill you. It's a... It's a very bad idea. Do not recommend it. The problem with activating is they could play like Vivian Arcbow, like then my knight, my knight is vulnerable. They could play like Vivian Arcbow Ranger and have the Yorvo kill the knight. Yeah, there's a good chance they avail somewhere. The land shall conquer you. Thank you so much there, wizard. Thank you so much. Cheers, I appreciate that. Gosh, Veil of Summer is so rough. I just traded two removal spells for, I guess, two cards, plus they get to draw a card, plus they get this 3-3. Three, three. Summer's up to five dollars in paper. It's just it's so good. It's so good.
Makes sense. I mean, it's it's so efficient. It's it's got to be great in every format. <laughs> Nature will take so they had Arcbow Ranger. We're gonna tear Called you that apart. one. I guess I could have gone with the gain life so I don't die immediately to just a removal spell on Bone Crusher Giant. Need to keep the pressure going though. That was a pretty, pretty nice hand again from them because I had a good hand. I had two, but they had a better one. <laughs> Man, this this rank stuff is pretty rough. Because yeah, in including that the free disconnect win that I I didn't count over here where. We're one game over 500 on the day, and we dropped from rank 500 to rank 1,000, being one game over 500. That's pretty rough. But yeah, so green is really is really difficult to beat. Uh, we find out there. Um, but also, like the thing, this is the thing about playing reactive spells. When you're playing day one of a format, it's so much easier to play threats than play reactive spells. That's just kind of how it is. Um, so yeah, not not surprised to not do well with this immediately. Um, Bedevil looks really good though. We're gonna trim a, a Bedeck and the Murderous Rider, get a couple of Bedevils in here. Um, Drown in the Lock was not real great. You know, this is this is definitely a mid range kind of deck, but uh, really looked like we were missing um, our sweeper. Like Witch's Vengeance didn't look good. Masker Girl didn't look good. These two cards I'm not excited about at all. Um, especially with Masker Girl being five mana. I don't want Masker Girl at all, basically. Um, we get a Noxious Grasp in the main. What's the... Yeah, I'd rather play Noxious Grasp than Drown in the Lock, I think. What's the Sweeper? Why can't I think of it? It starts with an R. Um, but I'm just blanking right now. Ritual. There we go. Because it's kind of hard to, to one for one everything. Um, so yeah, we'll get a couple of ritual of soot in there. But Murder's Rider is pretty nice. Royal Scions, Ebon Legion was awesome. Dreadhorde Butchered wasn't. Um, wasn't that great. We we never had Dreadhorde Butcher Royal the Royal Scions. And we didn't, you know, play against control. Dreadhorde Butcher it helps out a bunch there. Rankle was pretty good, and the God Eternals was definitely good. 
Nicol Bolas is a good card as well. Um, so yeah, you know, like we'll we'll keep working on it. Look, it kind of feels like Grixis control may be the way to go instead of mid range here. If there's going to be a lot of like those kind of green decks that like the three green decks that we struggled with there where maybe you can go more card advantage and uh go in control you, you know you get fires of invention drawn from dreams a bunch of ritual of sud in the main deck you can, you can have a whole lot more two for one kind of cards and so like maybe that's where we need to go instead of being um aggressive like this but we'll see you know day one things will change uh what about way of fey of wishes in the deck so you just so you know you have your one four there I just don't really want to cast granted the games are too fast like granted is is so slow like all those like those games like we'd never have a chance to cast granted uh so you know like a two mana one four i don't really want to play that but no i don't i don't really want it Yeah, Dreadhorde also good against smaller creatures and stuff too. Um, Dreadhorde Butcher getting bl blocked by Gilded Goose though is is pretty rough. That's what we're kind of learning here. You know, like the O2 Gilded Goose just like blocking the Dreadhorde Butcher. That's really annoying. But it Dreadhorde Butcher, of course, does pair super well with Royal Scions. But yeah, Oko. Um, you see, like, you know, we're putting in some more cards for, for Oko in here because, yeah, Oko was really incredible and so was the Great Henge. And, of course, so is Questing Beast, like those three cards. So having something like Bedevil that can take out all three of those um, at instant speed. Whoops. That looks to be uh, necessary there. I did like Bone Crusher Giant. This card looked pretty good. Like the, It was a lot of times it was like five mana, a 4-3 that ETBs and deals two. Did that a lot. But it was all right. Um, I don't hate Spyglass, honestly, because Spyglass is good against those, those Simic decks. I haven't liked Spyglass. Like, honestly, Spyglass actually gained a lot of value from rotation, from Teferi Hero of Dominaria rotating, to be honest, because, so yeah, like, that's a card that I hadn't really considered too much, but, um, you know, you mentioned it, like, that could be a good card to be playing here. Um, I, cause against Esper before, um, you would, no, Spyglass doesn't do anything against Goose. Well, I mean, it, it stops it from making food tokens. Yes, but it doesn't stop it from adding mana. Yeah. Spyglass was reprinted, um, against the Esper decks from before where you'd want it, they had the two different Teferis and you could name one, but they could have the other to tuck it. And then they get to use the first one and it was just a problem. You never really wanted to use it. The Simic deck there, like they're not playing... Honestly, like that, that's probably a really good card because they're not playing artifact removal. And, you know, you can name it, you can play it, you can name Oko or Nissa, and then you just don't have to deal with Okos or Nissas again. So, yeah, like naming Oko, like that could be a really good way to deal with all the Okos and you don't have to worry about Vela Summer. These Vela Summers are really rough. Um, yeah, Blight Beetle. Um, yeah, Blight Beetle isn't bad. Um, Blight Beetle definitely gr gained a lot of value with this, with, uh, this set. I hated Blight Beetle last format, but, you know, it's a new format. Um, Blight Beetle, because, you know, like, it's, you know, it shuts down Yorvo. You know, Yorvo, Krasis, don't get counters. This does not stop Nissa lands. Like, Nissa lands still have the counters, because like whenever the Nissa lands um, get the counters, they're technically lands. Uh, I don't know. It's it's a weird thing, but yeah. So the Nissa lands are not stopped. But uh, Yorvo, Wildborn Preserver, um, you know, even against the McFlash, like it, this shuts down Wildborn Preserver and um, the Brineborn Cutthroat. There. Hey, what's up, numbers? Thanks for continuing your sub there. For Cavalcade, why not play one Chandra Novice? Uh, yeah, yeah, Chandra, Chandra's great. And 
Yeah, I like it, Jopsy. I like Chandra Novice Pyromancer quite a bit there. It's a great card. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's another option. Like that's that's something to think about here. Um, this stops a lot of a lot of cards in the format, um, and in, you know a lot of people are playing Vivian Arcbow Ranger. This stops the Arcbow Ranger from adding counters to stuff as well. So yeah, def definitely a, a card to think about here. Um, Yeah, if you if you have to replace Royal Scions, I would probably play a Kefnet or two. Maybe like Kefnet and some other creature. Maybe like Thief of Sanity. Or the one three lifelink death touch thing. Other stuff like that. But anyway, so that's Grixis Midrange. That's our first take on it. There's um you know, a lot of options in here. And you know, like th this is the kind of deck that's not gonna be perfect day one. That's for sure, but this was still fun to play. And yeah, a lot of options whenever we go against green decks. But speaking of green decks, we got a lot of different green decks to play ourselves. So that's what we're gonna be doing here. So if you're watching this later on YouTube, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe buttons over there. And of course, feel free to leave comments. I always like seeing the comments in the YouTube channel also. Um, but uh, yeah, there we go. So thank you so much for watching Grixis Midrange. And I'll see you for the next video.